In this video, I'm going to apologize and tell you about a traffic stop I made of a bicyclist that ran a stop sign. So late one night, or actually I think it was probably early one morning, I'm guessing around one in the morning or so, I was out on patrol and I noticed a bicyclist that was probably 150 yards away. We were the only two living souls out that you could see. He, he was on a bicycle. I was driving along slowly in my police car a long way away from him. And he came up to a stop sign and just kept driving right on through it. Probably five or ten miles an hour, just right on through it. Didn't even stop. So I thought, hey, there's my big crime for the night. I'm going to go up and contact him and just give him a warning. It's not worth writing a ticket or anything. I'm just going to give him a warning. And so I pulled up beside him and I said, hey, by the way, please do stop at the next stop sign you come to. And his response to me was something to the effect of, F you. Well, I was taken aback. I just wanted to be a nice guy and do my thing, do what my job was and give a warning and have a contact and, and you know, not have somebody complain the next day that I hadn't done anything about seeing a, a traffic violation. And then he responds like that. Well, I'm in my 20s and have a ego. Well, not an ego. I'd say like most cops, it's not an ego. It's a lack of self-confidence. And so I was clearly offended by this. And uh, and I said, whoa. I said, hey, I'm just telling you, stop at the next stop sign. So I kind of stepped it up a little bit. Now I'm telling him what to do rather than being nice and friendly. And his response was roughly the same, something to the effect of uh, F you. And so I said, pull over. And he kept driving. So I flipped on my overhead lights and pulled in behind him. And he pulled over in a little bit. And I got out and walked up and said, man, what's your deal? Come on. And, and he says, what do you want? He says, this is ridiculous. He says, there's nobody around. I didn't hurt anything. And so I explained to him, as any good police officer would, that there's a law that says he must stop at that stop sign. And I was trying to just warn him, but my job is to gain voluntary compliance with the law, which of course is a completely ridiculous idea. Is that an oxymoron or what? We'll probably cover that in another video. But my job is to get him to do what he should do voluntarily. And he said, no, you know, this is ridiculous. You're hassling me. You're looking for a DUI and you're too bored. There's nothing for you to do, blah, 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 and whatever, the typical thing. And basically just blowing me off, blowing me off. I had a badge on. I had, I'm like, I'm a tough guy. I had a gun on and everything. I had that, that, that brass pass. Unbelievable that somebody would talk to me this way. But I stayed professional and, and I said, hey, you know what? Y you got to stop at the stop signs. If you're not going to just kind of agree to be cool about it, I'm going to write you a ticket. And he, you know, we'll do whatever you got to do or whatever he said. So, oh, and I forgot one part of the story. Um, toward the beginning, I'm asking him what his name is and he won't tell me. So then I, I decide, hey, I'm going to write him a ticket. This is what he gets. So I pull out my ticket book and I flip it open and I'm ready to go. And I say, what's your, let me have your driver's license. I don't have one, he says. I said, well, come on, what's your last name? I don't remember. I asked him what his first name, I don't think he didn't remember his first name either. He didn't remember anything about him. So in that case, I couldn't write him a ticket, but I'd already, I forget what I'd put on the top. I'd started it. And the rule is once you start a ticket, it's too late, you have to finish it, or you have to go through all kinds of paperwork to explain why, and it's just not worth it. So once you start a ticket, you're going to finish it. But that's what I believed at the time. So I uh, said, hey, come on, you've got to you got to give me this info. I'm going to write the ticket. It's not saying you're guilty. You can go to court, and you just you got to do this, because if you don't, I have to arrest you, and that's ridiculous over what's going on tonight. So please, just give me your name and information. I'll give you the ticket. You can deal with it in court. He refused, still refused, not being real friendly toward me ticking me off even more. However, I'm staying professional. And I said, hey, I, I, come on, just do, I'm begging him, please just write this, make this easy. He refuses. So I call the sergeant and ask him to come over. So the sergeant drives over and does the same thing. Hey, you know, this guy, this cop officer is just trying to give you a ticket. Please play along with it. You're not saying you're guilty. You can go to court and work. No, guy refuses. And so I ended up kidnapping this guy. I physically grabbed him, I handcuffed his hands behind his back, put him in the back of my police car, hauled him a few blocks away to a cage, and he had to stay in that cage for the rest of the night until the next morning. 
that's kidnapping. I mean, you can you can look at fancy laws that say it's not, but if we look at what kidnapping is and, you know, like taking a person from the place where they were and they wanted to be and taking them against their will to another place and holding them there, yeah, that's kind of, that fits the definition. Maybe not the, the government's, you know, statute definition, but that's, that's kidnapping. Like if you look at it philosophically or with intellectual honesty, that's kidnapping. I kidnapped a guy. I kidnapped a guy. And I kidnapped a lot of people over my career. That's messed up. Shame on me. I should not have done that. I apologize. Apologize to him. Apologize to everyone else that I kidnapped. I apologize to everyone else that I harassed like that. It was wrong of me. I should not have done that. I don't know how I could go back and trace everybody down and personally apologize to them. But uh, gosh, I hope, hope many of them see this video and, and recognize that I'm sorry. Now, I bet you there are a couple of you watching this that are saying to yourself, well, wait a minute, you were a cop, you had a right to do this, it was his fault for being a jerk, um, you gave him every chance, you were nice about it, uh, he's the bad guy here, this bicyclist is the bad guy. No, I would have agreed with you, up until about 10 years ago when I really started getting into philosophy and studying and looking at morality and ethics and, and what's right and wrong and all this, I, before my whole journey, I would have completely agreed with you. However... No, this guy was just a peaceful guy going about his business, and I was wrong. I was just plain old wrong. If you want to check out some of my other videos on philosophy and such, you'll kind of, you know, watch a dozen of them. They're all, most of them are shorter than this one, and you'll kind of get an idea of where I'm coming from, but I was absolutely wrong to do that, and uh, yeah, sorry guy, I messed up.